Absolutely savage. The worst I've ever felt on a bike. I'm nervous. It's 4 a.m. and we're near Verbier and I'm on the start line for what is without question the hardest bike race I've ever entered. It's called the Tour de Station, literally a tour of the Swiss ski station. It's 242 kilometers long with 8,848 meters of elevation. It's literally an Everesting. And along with the 650 other lunatics that I'm going to be doing this with. Apparently, Alberto Contador is, is among them. Apparently, he's quite good. The route profile is hideous. It's more akin to the dental records of a piranha than a bike ride. And when the organizers devised it, they weren't sure if anyone would complete it. Bodes well, doesn't it? Now, based around the beautiful ski resort of Verbier, the route features 11 categorised climbs at altitudes over 2,000 metres as it flows through the enchanting landscapes of Valais, through vineyards, meadows, high mountains, Swiss villages and ski resorts. The fastest riders will look to complete this epic ride in around 10 hours. I'm aiming for more like 11.30. It's going to be really tough though. The sun is coming up quick now and it's really starting to warm up. Oh, it's starting to look beautiful. Switzerland starting to show itself. You've got to take a selfie when you're in Switzerland, aren't you? Look at that. Having broken this challenge down and looked at previous endurance rides I've done, such as uh, the Coast to Coast and Everesting and others, and also the rides of, of other people, you see a trend, and that is people get excited, they get caught up in the adrenaline and they feel fresh, and the mistake they make is they go off far too hard at the start. And that causes them to eventually bonk around six or seven hours in when they just end up crawling to the finish. And there's a physiological reason for this, and it's to do with the way that your body uses fuel. So at lower intensities, you're able to burn mostly fat and some carbs. And then at higher intensities, when you're riding at sort of threshold and above, you're burning exclusively carbohydrate. And the issue with this is that when you are just burning just carbs, your body can't, you can't replace the fuel that you're burning. And so you run out of fuel and that's why you bonk. And having done gas exchange tests in labs over the years, I know the points at which my body sort of starts to change and how much sort of carbs I'm burning relative to how much fat I'm burning. And the take home thing and my strategy is that I'm gonna try and ride a sort of zone, upper zone two, lower zone three, and continue to just try and fuel and get around 80 grams of carbs in every hour. And by doing this, I shouldn't be burning all my matches. I should be able to continue riding without bonking as long as I keep on eating. Fourth climb now, and I'm feeling good. I just keep sort of overtaking people, reeling them in, sticking to my pace and then taking a few on the descent usually as well. So it's, uh, it's all going well. And uh, the bike feels mega as well. You're probably wondering a bit about the bike I'm riding today. So I've made a video over on the tech channel you can check out. It tells you all about it. But my sort of big modification I've made, apart from putting easy gearing on, is the wheels. So these 
our Kdex's super duper fancy schmancy pants 36 disc wheels and they're rather special so according to Kdex they're big gains for big days which seems kind of appropriate for today days don't get much bigger than this really light 1300 grams proper smooth ceramic bearings ah oh, just feel mega <laughs> The descents here are amazing. The road surface is so good, but I'm just trying to descend safely, but you can still go pretty quick. And then when I get onto the flats like this now, the ticks get aero and just try and tick along at a good speed for about 200 watts, which is what I'm doing now. So it's pretty easy on the power, but you can go quite quick as long as you keep the chain tight. Never going to believe this, but just overtaken Alberto Contador. I never thought I'd ever do that in my entire life. I've dropped Alberto Contador. So delete all your comments about me getting dropped now. There you go, have some of that. <laughs> Five hours 50 in now. We're over halfway in distance and elevation. And a big descent about to come up. So, should recoup a load of time. Spurs you on when you see stuff like that. Incredible. I think that's the Matterhorn there. Wow, oh, look at that. The Matterhorn, Zermatt. Things were going well. I felt like I was in good form and I was making great time. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, ah, oh, no. I had a bit of an off back there. As you see, I've lost a bit of skin. I was coming through a little technical section, very narrow road, very steep. This little, little dog decided to run out in front of me. It's gonna take more than a dog, a little Swiss dog, to stop this puppy. I think this is number seven now, and oh, starting to bite, starting to feel it. It's tough, real tough, getting hotter too. Still reeling people in on the climbs. Um, so that's good, just less now. It's like maybe one or two people per climb. It's really strung out. And the good thing is, is I reckon I've still got a good lead on, on Bertie, back there somewhere. So, just gonna keep pressing on. Oh, this is a big day. Climb nine, Tion. It's 20 kilometers long, and I've been told it's the hardest because it's unrelenting and it gets very hot. Uh, I've just got to grind it out. Grind it out. Grind it out. Oh. Power's dropping off a bit now. I'm like just trying to keep it together and just try and average 230 watts on this climb. It's just, you know, we're eight and a half hours in now. It's always gonna be hard. I'm ready for this to be over now. All that's keeping me going is the thought of a beer and a pizza and a strudel and some raclette 
and uh, all the cheese and chocolate and asleep. This is savage, absolutely savage. Everything hurts. Everything hurts right now. Second to last climb. Oh, just gotta crawl up it, get it done, come on. End in sight. And I'm eating one of them, a whole one. Sorry, vegans. The wheels have well and truly fallen off. It's the worst. I've ever felt on a bike. I am crawling, completely bonked. I'm in pure survival mode, pissing it down and dying. As I headed onto the bottom of the Col de la Croix de Coeur, the storm had really set in. I'd made good progress on the penultimate climb, moving into 17th place overall. However, I'd failed to take on enough food, meaning I bonked hard in the final 12 kilometers at 7.9%. It had a max of 19% too, and it was gonna be the longest and toughest 12 kilometers of my life. So I groveled to the finish. The cool thing is though, is if you want to have a go at many of the climbs in this event, including the Quad de Coeur, it's actually modeled in Ruvi, meaning that you can ride it virtually and train for it, even if you've never been here. You can have a go and try and beat my time too, which you, you probably will as, um, well, I was enduring the biggest bonk of my life. Glad you signed up to this at this moment. Oh, f oh. I think I've got a slow puncture on my front tire, but I should be able to get to the top. Oh. My jacket in the front pocket of my bag. I am so glad that's over. Right, I'm going to take it real easy down here. Take your time, guys. As you could probably tell, I was in absolutely no fit state to properly finish the video at the end of the ride yesterday. So here I am the next day. And uh, that was without question the hardest ride I've ever done in my life. And my WHOOP recovery score confirms it. Apparently I'm 1% recovered. But I managed to complete it in 11 hours, 57 minutes, getting under 12 hours. And I was 25th out of 650 people. First Brit home and incredibly, only 33 people finished the Ultra Fondo yesterday. Such was the severity of the weather conditions at the end. And sadly, Alberto Contador was one of the riders that didn't finish. Although I can't really blame him. The, um, I mean, the, the indignity of being passed and dropped by me would, would probably break most people to be fair. But if you want to find like your physical limit in a truly stunning and beautiful place, then come to Verbier and have a go at the Tour de Station. It is an incredible event. And if I can do it, then I'm sure many of you can do it as well. And if you want to find out more about the, the bikes, the tech and the amazing Kadex wheels I use, then check out the video on the tech channel. It's up there now. And if you enjoyed watching me suffer, then please give this video a big thumbs up. I'm going to go to sleep now. Um, Still pretty tired, to be honest. <laughs> Bye.